This is the M6, yo. It is a tier 10 American autoloading heavy tank, which features two guns, a high DPM three shell autoloader or a double shot, also pretty high DPM uh, 450 alpha gun. Both of the guns on this vehicle are insane. This is the BZ-75, which also features two guns and has a pretty solid 130 mil. The problem is the armor on this tank and overall profile is much worse than other vehicles that feature a similar 130. In fact, I'd say the VZ-55 not only features more DPM, better accuracy, a better mechanic, but a much better armor profile if you're planning to run the 130 on this vehicle, which kind of defeats the purpose of it. So really, you're going to run the derp gun if you grind this tank. And I mean, why wouldn't you? That's the whole point of this line. So in today's video, we're going to be comparing the derp gun from the BZ-75 to the double shotgun on the M6 Show. Now, the M6 Show features about 2,600 DPM with the double shot, which is four, 500 more than the BZ-75 features with its derp gun. Not only that, but the O is able to deal 900 damage in 1.71 seconds if you connect both shells. The BZ's HE deals 780. So not only do you deal 120 more damage in your clip with the O, but you deal it in a faster time than the BZ can even aim in. With more penetration, you also get heat rounds in this tank. You have more gun depression, you have a more effective turret, because while yes, you do have hatches, let's be real, the BZ has bigger and easier to pen hatches. Oh, and you can't really heat through this vehicle's turret. Uh, it's not looking good for the, uh, it's not looking good for the BZ right now. The O also has a mechanic that means when you get tracked, you can still reverse at, I don't really know what it is, 7 kilometers per hour? I'm not sure if this tank's is 3 or 4, or if they changed it to 7. Either way, the vehicle is very dangerous. It's probably one of the most dangerous tier 10s in the game, and it's not one to be messed with. So we can see the enemy KPZ-50T is in front of us here. And, well, he was. I, I knew he was overpoking, so I was kind of hoping we could get some damage out. But dude basically killed himself. That was a really unfortunate shot. But hey, we got the second one out at least. If you're in a, C a BZ or a single shot and you miss the first shell, you're not going to get the second one out ever. So at least in this vehicle, if you mess up a shot, you can still reload and get that second one out. All right, let's reload here. Five more seconds left. Three, two, one, and there's the enemy E3. There's one shell, and we're not able to get the second out. But that's all right. It's still 400 damage, and we'll just get the second shell into the VZ. There you go. So we were still able to get 900 HP into our opponents. We can see the enemy VZ is playing, and their whole team is playing very aggressive on the other side of the map. We got shot in the side by something. Um, I'm not really sure what that would be. It's not the leopard. I'm just going to chill here really briefly and then we're going to reload and aim it on the vz there you go nice 477 and there you go that's 870 health we just ripped off of our opponent uh looking at the lineup here it is a badger that shot me in the rear especially i should have known that the moment i saw it was an apcr shell but yes it was indeed le badger okay so let's reload um we got the e3 off to the side and watch this e3 thinks he's tough right e3 thinks oh, i got a decent chunk of health oh there's 504 there's 905 do you see the damage output this vehicle has? Like, I would like to see anybody do that in a BZ. You couldn't. Like, if you tried and tried and tried, you could not do what I just did in a BZ. Um, now, ideally, if the M60 shoots the VZ here, I'm going to try and shoot Le Fosch. I wonder if I can ram him to death. I just, I don't want to waste the shells that this vehicle has on a super low HP player when I can deal a thousand to the Fosch, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay, good. Um... Okay, this is pretty good right now. We do have the Badger on our side, so I'm just going to move up a little bit. We'll chill right here for now. I'm not really worried about the Fosh, especially because our WZ's right here. EHE's him. Um, I feel like, as of right now, we can put on our reticle Cali. We can back up, aim it on the Badger. There you go. One shell. Ah, oh, unfortunate. Second shell missed. Fosh misses us, so, which is fine. And there you go. WZ's just getting bleeds out. It's kind of good that I'm distracting them here, because... Our team's getting bleeds out. I'm just going to drive. I mean, this Fosh, if he turns for me, WZ's going to kill him anyway. See, there was somebody that commented uh, yesterday on one of my videos that said, why do you save your shells and go for damage instead of, you know, killing the player? And like, yeah, I could have killed that VZ, who's super low, or I can just win the game and get out more damage. And I always go for more damage if I know it's going to be a win. Like... If I'm going to lose a battle, or I know that it could be a loss, then I'm not going to try and save my shells for a higher HP opponent. But if I'm still helping my team by shooting a Fosh down 1,000 HP, and one of my teammates is going to clear the VZ, then I don't really mind it. 
Um, even if the VZ had shot me, I still wouldn't have minded it. We did 5,300 damage there. And, I mean, I, I would just like to see a BZ, even if it penned every shot, do that much damage in that game against the opponents we shot. Like, the gun isn't accurate enough to hit the E3 consistently in the lower plate from that distance. I doubt we would have hit the VZ's lower plate at that distance, let alone pen it with Hesh. Uh, good luck hitting the Badger. It's just... I don't know. The, the first game there already, I think, illustrates my point of view when it comes to why derp guns are useless. Because, I mean, heck, why would you drive a 183 when you can drive a double shot, yo? It's 50 less damage than a 183, and you have accuracy, you have pretty good DPM. I mean, the 183 is, what, 2,900 DPM, 2,800? And the yo has 2,500 with the shells. I mean, that's, that's pretty dang dangerous. And if you're running the three shot on the O, you can actually have the same DPM as a 183, so. <laughs> All right, here we go. Second battle. This time we're in the BZ-75. I'm going to ping for my team to uh, go over there. We'll see if they do. Affirmative. Good. All righty. Now, the BZ features okay mobility. It's a little bit faster than the O. The O goes 35, but the O does have a much better power to weight. You can see here the BZ, we're just getting up to 30 now. You got to wait for it to accelerate to get up to 40. Uh, but once it gets there, it's actually decently mobile. Uh, I also really like the profile of this tank. It's very low down. It's very small, which uh, bigger is not better. I always talk about this when it comes to heavy tanks. You want a very small heavy. If you can have a lot of armor in a smaller profile, it's much better than having a lot of armor on a big profile. That's just common sense. So we are going to uh, see what we can do here. Hmm. Got the KPZ off to the side. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to maneuver our way over here. Got the enemy skunk. I'm just going to go wide. Keep on going wide. There we go. Nice. Digging uh, far wide corner is really, really important in this vehicle. And there you go. That is a nice shell. Now, I don't think we would have been able to, uh, to continue to get damage out if we were in the... Uh, we were in the yo there but the super conk he's playing aggressive which is obviously going to be a pretty big problem if he's able to get where we are we got the enemy tl7 there you go nice hash into his hatch but we got a very long reload ahead of us here and that's something i'm gonna have to be very cautious about especially because we don't have that much support on this flank if that super conk gets behind us it's going to be a very very serious problem so let's aim it on the yo and or not the yo sorry the fosh we get a nice pen into his lower plate but um, this is looking really bad, especially because the prog is ignoring the flank that we're at. Yeah, great job, prog. Just ignore this, you know? Yeah, yeah. Keep ignoring it. Why Why would you support me? All right, well, I'm just going to chill here then. Let's see. Is the Fosh going to poke it again? He does. We get a shell out. Prog's still going to screw me. I'm just going to push the prog. Like, dude's actually brain dead. I, I don't know what to say. Like, yeah. Great job, dude. Oh, well, that's his problem. He dies for it. All right, let's aim it on the TL-7, and we're going to... There you go, 802 shot into his hatch. I mean, we're doing good. You can definitely see the difference between this tank and the Yo. The Yo features a consistent gun. This tank features a devastating gun when it's able to hit. 62A seems like he's going to get out some box, and uh, we're going to see what we can do here. 907 looked like he was going to play quite aggressive, but you never know. We'll see. Oh, they got the boss Chaltion, and... Oh, unfortunate. Could have been a very nasty shell, but we weren't able to get it out. Let's see, let's see. Oh! <laughs> I was able to cut him off, that's great. Alright, let's see, we got the, uh, we got the 907, and we got the clear. So, in this game, we were able to shoot, basically on reload the entire battle. We penned a lot of HE shells, and we did pretty good. In fact, this was a really good result for the BZ. And we still did less damage than we did in the yo. And I'm quite confident that if we were in a yo in that situation, we still probably could have done more damage. The effective DPM of the BZ-75 with the derp gun firing high explosive is about 2,700. And that's if you're shooting HE the entire game. Uh, judging that we didn't pen one of our HEs on the boss shot to own, judging that we didn't... Um, uh, no, we did pen. I think the rest of our shells we actually did pen. But even with that, we still probably had, in total, this game about maybe 25, 2400 effective DPM. Compare that to 
the just 2,500 effective DPM in the Yo consistently with a much more accurate gun, better gun depression, a more consistent armor profile. I don't know. Like, the BZ, it's fun, but at the end of the day, just grind Yo. Grind a T57 Heavy. Grind a Kron. I mean, a lot of people always complain about the Kron's DPM, yet this vehicle has 2,150 DPM. And if you make your way over to the Swedish Heavy, the Kron has how much DPM? It should be about 2,300. Yeah, this tank has more DPM than the Yo. So it really, it or not the Yo, uh, more DPM than the BZ. So I don't know. Like, as much as I want to like the tank, it's just Wargaming should have given it either more DPM, more accuracy, or better pen. And right now it doesn't have any of those, and because of that, it just feels mid. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.